when I was arrested in 2017 in Cambodia and charged with espionage, it so happened that in the cell that I was sharing with 140 other prisoners, a cell less than a third the size of a tennis court, there was a, a contraband smartphone and it was possible for me to make contact with Julian in the Ecuadorian embassy. Within an hour, I got a response from Julian and some advice on how best to deal with my incarceration. I won't go into details about that, but I, I have a, a personal reason, of course, for being thankful to Julian for being so quick off the mark in helping me. But I have a professional reason also because I realized at that time that if in 2010, I as a journalist and filmmaker had been presented with the material that he was presented with, I would have had no hesitation whatsoever in broadcasting it, in including it in a, a film that I was making, in writing about it on a blog, and could very easily have found myself in exactly the same situation that Julian is in now. I think the same probably applies to most of the filmmakers and journalists that I know. Jump forward 12 years, and I would have some hesitation in making that move, in making that information public, because I would not want to spend the next 10 years fighting extradition proceedings to be sent to the United States for having exposed truths that the United States doesn't want exposed. I'd like just to say a couple of words about consular assistance. This expression crops up all of the time. Our Prime Minister, our Foreign Minister and various different politicians say that Julian is receiving consular assistance. I can assure you from my own experience in jail that consular assistance amounts to, in my case, a toothbrush and a paperback book, out of date copies of local newspapers and the delivery of mail. And that is it, right? Consular, consular assistance does not exist in reality and I think that anybody else who's been in my situation could confirm that. Just briefly, there was a, another prisoner in jail with me. His name was Giuseppe Nicolosi. We called him Zippy. Zippy was in the final months of his seven-year sentence based on evidence that was as flimsy as mine, in my case. Zippy became very, very ill. We in jail got messages to the Australian Embassy, many messages via this mobile phone, this contraband mobile phone, alerting the Embassy to the fact that Zippy was very unwell and getting worse and needed to be in a hospital. He needed to be airlifted back to Australia actually to be in an intensive care ward. The Australian Embassy said it wasn't their problem, it's nothing that they could do about it. And to cut a long story short, Zippy died of malnutrition and neglect in a, a hospital. He was taken to the hospital two days before he died. That is the extent to which our government assists Australians who get into trouble, whether they be Julian Assange or a, a backpacker. The final, the final point that I'd like to make has to do with diplomatic intervention. In my own case, after 15 months in jail, I was found guilty of espionage and sentenced to six years, a six-year jail sentence. Three weeks later, the guards appeared at my door and told me that I was being released immediately. When I got out of jail, I discovered shortly thereafter that Malcolm Turnbull, our then Prime Minister, had done a deal with Hun Sen, the Prime Minister of Cambodia, whereby I'd be taken to trial and then released on a pardon after my trial. In other words, our Prime Minister agreed with Cambodia's Prime Minister that I would be found guilty, there was no question that I might be found innocent, and that I would then receive a pardon. My concern now is that a similar kind of deal might occur behind the scenes whereby it appears as though the Australian government is doing the right thing by Julian, but in actual fact he spends the next two, three, four or five years waiting for the pardon to come through, which really needs to come through immediately. Finally, I have actually written yesterday and this morning to um, President Joe Biden and to Carolyn Kennedy, our new ambassador, the US's new ambassador to, to Australia, and through the magic of Google, I've managed to find the words of both Joe Biden and John F. Kennedy, Carolyn Kennedy's father, in which, and you can Google them and find them yourself, uh, in which they 
espouse the very same values that Julian espouses as a journalist, and yet he is in jail for articulating the need for freedom of the press, for freedom of information, for the public to be informed about what goes on behind the scenes, even if it is embarrassing to the government's concerned. So, along with everybody else here today, I hope that Anthony Albanese can pick up the phone and say to Joe, I know it's difficult for you politically, it's difficult for me politically also, but this is a matter of principle and we need to put politics aside and send Julian back to his family and back to Australia. Thank you.